untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a slightly different take on the Blue-White Soldiers deck than what you might be used to. This is an idea that I alluded to at the end of my original Blue-White Soldiers video. If we make room for some more instant speed creatures like Zephyr Sentinel, it also becomes easier to keep up mana for counter spells such as Protect the Negotiators. So Sentinel a 2 mana 2 one with Flash and Flying. And when it enters the battlefield, we can return up to one other target creature we control to Turner's hand. If it was a soldier, we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Sentinel, so it can potentially save one of our creatures from spot removal, which is always great. And it also keeps the opponent guessing, since we might have a counter spell in hand, we might have a Sentinel, or we might just have an activated ability that we can use, such as Recruitment Officer for four mana to dig for another soldier. We even have two copies of Mirex in our mana base that can be activated to make a 1-1 Might token. And then our counter spells include the full set of Protect the Negotiators, which is more of a 3-drop in this deck as we often want to kick it for an extra white mana. And then it will counter target spell unless its controller pays 1 for each creature we control. And if we kicked it, we get to make an additional 1-1 one, one Soldier token. So a pretty great counter spell in this type of deck. And then we also have a 1-of copy of Mig Disappear, which is another great counter for 2 mana. Can potentially sacrifice a random token to enable Casualty as well, in which case it can counter unless the opponent pays 4. And then we've got another instant in Destroy Evil, can destroy creature with toughness 4 or greater, so perfect for taking out shield root, but it can also destroy an enchantment, so most decks in the format have at least one of these two that we can take out. And then another advantage of playing all these spells at instant speed is that we can potentially disguise a Wandering Emperor as well. The 4-mana Planeswalker can be flashed in, and then we can put a plus one plus one counter on a creature and give it first strike until end of turn. We can maybe minus two to exile a tapped creature and gain two life, which gives us access to more removal, since as you may have noticed we're not playing with Brutal Cathar in this build, so instead we've got Wandering Emperor, Destroy Evil, and some of our channel lands to rely on. And the fact that most soldiers deck don't play Wandering Emperor means you're going to be able to ambush way more opponents with the plus one and the minus two. And then of course the minus one can also make additional samurai tokens. And then looking at the rest of the build, we're also playing the full set of Harbin, since this is actually a pretty great finisher once you make a few tokens and start going wide, at which point you can maybe attack with five soldiers, give the team plus one plus one and flying until end of turn, and a two mana three two flyer is also pretty good in its own right. So despite being legendary, we're still playing four copies since it's often going to die to opposing removal spells, and then it's not bad to have a backup copy. And then Harbin also synergizes well with the Sentinel in a weird way, because Sentinel can maybe pick up a Resolute Reinforcements, the 2-mana 1-1 one, one with Flash, that makes a 1-1 one, one token when it enters, and then by picking up Reinforcements, Sentinel gets a plus-one counter, and we can replay Reinforcements, netting us an extra token, so that way we can also go wide to set up a lethal Harbin. And then we have three copies of Denik. This is mainly a nod to the mono red aggro decks and the format as a 2-3 with lifelink that can play defense quite well. Can maybe even make some clue tokens with the pious apparition and then by keeping up all our mana we can also sacrifice a clue token if we don't need to counter anything. And then we've got the full set of Valiant Veteran, of course, which will pump our soldiers by one. Can also exile from our graveyard to put plus one counters on the team. And then last but not least, Skystrike Officer, probably the most important card in the deck, a 2-3 flyer, when it attacks makes a colorless 1-1 one, one soldier token. The soldier token being a colorless artifact is actually quite helpful when facing a Skrelv, which wouldn't be able to give protection from colorless to attack past it. And then we can also tap three untapped soldiers we control to draw a card, which is another great use of all these tokens from reinforcements, from protect the negotiators, to start pulling ahead and drawing more cards. And then, of course, we mentioned our Wandering Emperor. The mana base, besides our two copies of Mirex, also features four copies of the Fortified Beachhead, which gives us another late-game mana sink. And then the Channel Lands, Soaring City, and Iganjo also get a discount from controlling legendaries. And now with three copies of Danik and four copies of Harbin, that's not too unusual. As you may have noticed, we're not playing with Thalia in this build, since it's a bit of a nombo with our various non-creature spells like Protect the Negotiators and Wandering Emperor. So we do lose a pretty important card in that sense, but hopefully the counter spells can make up for it. And then the new Seachrome Coast, also perfect in this Blue White Soldiers deck that now needs to cast more colored spells like Emperor and Protect the Negotiators. So instead of playing the Courtyard, which would be naming Soldier in this deck otherwise, we actually need more Blue White Dual Lands. So the Seachrome Coast is very helpful there, alongside the Deserted Beach and a Dark Car Waste. So we're getting to play with a lot of Blue White Dual Lands, the advantage of being a Blue White Soldier tribal deck. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not perfect since we don't get to play our officer on turn one, but I think it's still a keep. And then we'll probably go with the tamped beach, turn two can keep up sentinel and make disappear. Take it from there. Okay. Misery Shadow could be worth countering, since it also threatens to exile or veteran. And then now we could double spell Officer and Veteran or keep up Sentinel, which is also reasonable. Veteran's going to be more impactful once we have more creatures out. And then even if we just play Sentinel as a 2-1 flyer, that's totally fine. Flash Gorger. Okay. So now we can start drawing with our Sky Strike. Could also play Valiant Veteran. I think we'll get the Sky Strike down. And I could see hanging on to Igancho as a removal spell for Flesh Gorger. So I could draw now. Since I haven't played a land for a turn yet. Or I could threaten to double block Flesh Gorger. Let's draw now. Okay, that worked out. Okay, Archfiend's a problem. 6-6 six, six Flyer. Stops our Officer. Could also activate Officer, that's another option, but don't have a Brutal Cathar to draw towards. So our best bet is just drawing a Wandering Emperor or our 2-mana removal spell. Or we can just play Veteran and then attempt to double block. Although that could get ugly if there's instant speed removal. And then maybe next turn set up I Gancho. Okay, Trespasser's fine. And an Edict, that's okay too. So do I sacrifice my 1-drop, even though it's a mana sink? Given that we have double Sky Strike, I don't think we'll need a Recruitment Officer as much. And we'll see if they attack. I doubt it, since we could double block Archfiend profitably, only losing one Sky Strike in the process. Flash Gorger also gets double blocked. So we'll get to untap after drawing, end of turn. And then we're not in a terrible spot, especially if we pick up a Wandering Emperor at some point. Alright, so end of turn, draw with Officer. And Reinforcements is great too. So we'll just play Danik and hang on to Iganjo and Reinforcements. And then the Reinforcements will potentially help us uh, draw an additional card with Officer too. And Danik also discounts Iganjo by one. Need to survive two more turns with the Archfiend in play, and then the opponent will just lose the game to it. Assuming they don't have a way to gift the Archfiend to me, but I highly doubt it. Alright, looks like our opponent has given up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Officer, double veteran. Protect the negotiators for interaction. Although our opponent revealing a Thalia means Protect is not going to be at its best. Skralf also pretty scary since we only have white creatures on defense. So our opponent on the more traditional version of soldiers. Okay. Play a veteran and pass. Don't have a good block on Thalia. Mirex does make colorless creatures, but of course the mites cannot block. Frontliner's fine, and an officer. So they might have some impactful 3-drops that they cannot cast yet. Do we want to double block Thalia? Not really. Make this appear I could keep up, and that may be worth it. Opponent does get to potentially attack with quite a few creatures next turn. 
So getting a second veteran in play would protect against it. If I tap out, opponent could resolve a scary 3-drop, and then I'm not going to be able to counter it going forward. But it's going to take me a while to play a veteran and keep up a counter spell because of Thalia. So maybe my best bet is hoping the opponent misses a land for another turn, play veteran, and then keep my counter spells up afterwards. Because yeah, otherwise the frontliner and the officer could start attacking alongside Thalia. And then now I could see attacking with Officer as well. Although it's a decent mana sink, actually. If we want to keep up counter spells the next turn, we can also activate Officer's ability. Opponent passes, that was quick, so no third land. And yeah, now we get to enact our game plan perfectly. Play Mirax, pass, and then activate Officer if we don't need to counter anything. And eventually Harbin can fly our team. Just need a couple more soldiers. So now I think we're actually in the driver's seat. If they use Kralv to get through with their creatures, we can potentially attack back for more damage. Okay, opponent did have a reinforcements end of turn, that's fine. Can still block the 1-1s. One okay, Sky Strike will counter and we may as well make a token in the process. And then now I could play Harbin, still keep up, make disappear. Emperor's nice too. And if we play Harbin, how much damage do we have next turn in the air? Should be over 20, so yeah, let's go for it. And then if we draw land, we could even activate the Beachhead for plus one plus one. Got our make disappear to counter an opposing Brutal Cathar. So can't think of much that goes wrong here. Maybe an Iganjo channeling to kill a creature. Counter Sky Strike. So yeah, opponent stumbled a little bit on their mana. And the counter spells coming in handy despite a Thalia. And yeah, next turn we can just attack for lethal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands not amazing. Harbin double sentinel on the draw. Don't really have any real interaction. Not the best defensive start either. So this may be a mulligan. Well, this has a different problem. One land. If we draw second land, it's actually not bad. So maybe worth the risk. We're on the draw, so we have two draw steps before we need it. And there it is. Probably prefer playing my 2-drop on curve. Up against a red-black. Harvester. And there's a third land. So we could curve reinforcements into Sky Strike Officer and draw right away. Kind of like that. Bangbuster's fine. And then Harvester by itself doesn't kill Sky Strike, but they might have a cut down in hand. Alright, backup Sky Strike makes me less afraid of running one out. I doubt we're gonna cut down a 1 1 here, but they might cut down Officer, forcing me to tap to draw. Prefer that over getting into damage. So we both now have our card draw engine in play. But ours is free to activate. Okay, point's playing green as well. The plot thickens. There might be a Tyvar in our future. Canker Bloom, yeah, that also plays well in a Tyvar deck. So now Sky Strike Officer can attack. Valiant Veteran would die to Harvester, so it's not the best play necessarily. Better to maybe play it once we have a bigger board. Although that being said, Harbin might be even more valuable than the Valiant Veteran here. Okay, 
I'll go with Officer plus Harbin, I think. And hope there's no Tyvar. Otherwise, I get to kill Sky Strike and Harbin. Unleash the Inferno. That works. They can even kill the 1 1 token. We'll still have three soldiers to tap. Um, I guess I could just do that now, actually. Okay. Token down. But now we'll still be able to officer a plus veteran. And our opponent can hit us for seven if they'd like. Probably trade for a harvester at that point, so opponent just gets in for four. We'll take it. And a backup Harbin. That's nice. Don't quite have enough soldiers in play to give them flying. Beachhead reveal Valiant Veteran. Play it. And attack all outs. And then maybe next turn we can set up the surprise flying with Harbin. Opponent takes it. So I'm not hitting my position if we can dodge a sweeper here. Bangbuster draws. Okay, that's a good sign. So the best they can do now is maybe land into Tyvar. Kill two of my creatures with Harvester, but that's still not enough to stop me from giving flying. Glissa's fine as well. And opponent kills Valiant Veteran. So we'll draw a response, and our opponent still seems dead on the way back, even without Harbin. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems quite good. Harbin into a Sky Strike Officer. Can play a tapped beachhead for now. Could also go with turn 2 Valiant Veteran. I think Harbin's going to be the better 2-drop for now. And then next turn we have to decide if we want to keep up Protect or just tap out for Sky Strike. Opponent also Blue-White Soldiers. So countering a potential 3-drop could have its advantages here. And then do we want to trade? Not really. So I'll just pass... Can maybe set up an attack with the Wandering Emperor at some point. Opponent is attacking, we'll take it. And that's a juicy target. And now we get to resolve our own Sky Strike. Which seems decent, and then we can draw right away. Opponent could have a Brutal Cathar. Could have drawn right away in case we picked up a one drop as well. Right, Thalia we don't really care about as much. Okay. So not hating my position. Countered the opponent's Sky Strike and resolved their own. Back up Harbin, so now we don't mind a trade as much. Although now I kind of like attacking with the Sky Strike and setting up our Wandering Emperor. No. So that's a free ambush. And then we can still draw with Sky Strike while keeping blockers back to protect our Planeswalker. Backup Harbin makes sense. And a Valiant Veteran. Okay, so we'll have to see whether or not it's worth it to protect Emperor if they attack. And given that we have a backup Harbin, we could trade for the Frontliner. Put on just sending Thalia. And make sure to draw on the way out. So 
So by playing a veteran, we can attack with our Sky Strike past the opponent's Harbin. And then definitely attacking with Sky Strike. And then it's probably fine to exile Thalia here. Could also plus on my own Harbin, attack with two of my flyers, and then force the opponent to pressure Emperor again, and then potentially attack back for lethal. Don't mind that either. Since we are attacking for quite a bit here. Show them how we greet our and then the token is probably fine to attack as well. Still get a replacement token, so we can still draw with a Sky Strike. Opponent takes it. Okay. Pass it back, or do we draw now? Probably better to keep my creatures back on defense. With a Thalian play, if I draw a counter spell, I wouldn't be able to cast it anyways. Destroy evil to kill Harbin, fair enough. Got a replacement and still have five soldiers that can attack to give flying. So yeah, our opponent's in trouble in multiple ways. But yeah, the main difference in the approach of the blue-white soldier deck here is we got to counter the opponent's Sky Strike, and then our Sky Strike managed to pull us ahead. Of course, we got lucky to dodge a Brutal Cathar, which is a card the opponent has, but we don't. So it goes both ways. You think. Reinforcements gets to be played here as well. Not that we needed it. And another Harbin. It's gonna deal the finishing blow. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not great by any means, but I think it's still a keep. Harbin likely to be taken out by removal, and then having a backup's not all that bad. Could maybe play reinforcements first now. Happy to trade officer for evolved sleeper. And a turn to Bankbuster. That's pretty good. So now I'm probably more into just main phasing a Harbin. Keep the reinforcements to maybe play alongside a counter spell so we don't waste our mana if we don't need to counter anything. And then Harbin hits a bit harder. Go for the throats. That's fine. And then it is next. So your opponent's missing land drops. They might have some impactful 3 and 4 drops in hand, or more removal. So the question now is, do we replay Harbin, or end of turn reinforcements? So we get the ball rolling. I think I still play Harbin, if they kill it, that's fine. Pretty far from having 5 soldiers in play. And then next turn we can double spell or play Emperor. Alright, Liliana, not a card that's all that common anymore. But, uh, would have been better to reinforcements in that case. So now do we double spell? I think that's better than going for Emperor. Let's play Danik. Flashing reinforcements, and then we can discard a land to Liliana. Flash Quarter we could still potentially attack into, although that being said, I guess her opponent can crew Bankbuster and have a 4-4 on defense. So then um, we don't actually have a great way to pressure Liliana. Valiant Veteran, the draw. So if I attack all out on Liliana, they might be crewing Bankbuster, although they might be tempted to gain life with a Flash Gorger. So I'm hoping they just block with a Flash Gorger here. And they wouldn't be playing around a Wandering Emperor, which is not that common, to be fair. So that worked. 
Now Bangbuster could kill Emperor on the way back. But uh, we got our value, killing a Flash Quarter, taking out Liliana. And that means our opponent's gonna have to tap their creature to potentially be exposed on the way back. Opponent just draws with the Bank Buster instead. And now double Valiant Veteran could be the final nail. There doesn't seem to be a response. Just trying to think if there's anything that can lose us the game. Maybe a Gixis command. Although even then we should be fine making a Samurai token. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. 11 damage coming across, even more next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not perfect. Mirax making blue is our only blue source at the moment, so we may be unable to cast the rest of our hand. That being said, I can curve Officer into a 2-drop, and then an Officer on 3 would be great. So it might be worth the risk. Most of our lands we draw from here on will also be able to produce blue. Got a decent chance of being able to curve out. Alright, Soaring City counts. And uh, probably played now. Attack for two, keep up our counter spells, but most likely want to flash in Sentinel so we can draw with Officer right away. Put on keeping up two mana in a Soul Tide deck, don't see that very often. Yeah, still gonna play Sentinel. They might have a removal and response here. And then now, instead of tapping out for Officer, we probably keep up Interaction. Go for the Throat. Seems worth countering. Or I can let that happen, play Officer, and hope they can kill it. This is a better tempo play, I think. Counter, make a 1-1. One, one. And then now Officer can draw right away while still getting in damage. Okay, Simeon Simulacrum 4-3, that's fine. So, now that we drew Sentinel, I'm back on the plan of maybe wanting to uh, keep up my counterspell. Flyer can attack, and then we can also threaten to activate Officer or make a token with Mirex, so we have quite a few options here. And then maybe play Sky Strike once we have Make Disappear available. Evolving Adaptive, that's fine. And Defends the Temple. Thing that's still manageable. So I'm not gonna counter, and then instead we can activate Officer. Probably better than activating Mirex. Found some good ones Harbin, Valiant Veteran. Probably better than another Sky Strike to let me curve out better. And then Harbin to give the team flying might be a better win condition than Valiant Veteran pumping the team. Although it's close. Okay, so now we could also go for Sky Strike anyway. A wealth of options. If I Sky Strike and then don't need to make disappear end of turn Flash and Sentinel, then next turn we can surprise fly the team with Harbin, although I guess it's not a surprise when the opponent knows about it, but they don't know about the Sentinel. So this seems decent. Can still hit with Sentinel, and then draw with Officer. Tekathal, yeah, that seems worth countering. Although, can we present lethal if we just let it resolve? Opponent still has two mana, so I guess, yeah, we would have to counter sacking a creature. Uh, as opposed to flash and sentinel. Draw, next turn Harbin, fly over. Yeah, I think they're dead either way. If there's no relevant follow-up. They can get a good chunk of damage in if they want, but they also have to make sure they don't die. So just a simulacrum attacking. And then we'll draw. And now reinforcements might be even better. 
And then we can play Harbin with Make Disappear to protect it. And that should be game. And there we have it, so a quick one here against Sultai counters. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Even have a one drop to start out. Might be up against a mono blue counterspell deck, and in that case, officers a decent mana sink to help uh, play around counters. Okay, opponent bounced and then keeps up two mana. So now we probably just flash in reinforcements end of turn. Even their opponent could cast an impulse, so maybe I'm okay with, let's say, Denik getting countered. Not that Denik is going to be able to attack into a Haughty Jin, so might still prefer reinforcements. I guess the upside of playing a Legendary is that it enables a 3-mana Soaring City, although I don't think I would be channeling it just yet. So yeah, let's pass. Opponent did have the impulse. I'm okay with reinforcements getting countered, even though it would help with Harbin. And then next turn we'll double spell. Can attack for two first. And then I might go officer first, plays around something like a make disappear. And then play maybe a Denik, since Harbin could be more useful. And get this countered. Okay. So we could still be in danger if Haughty Jin shows up. Tolarian Terror also a problem. 5-5. Five, five. Opponent keeps up some mana. So... Now we could go for the Disturb on Denik, make a Flyer. As opposed to Activate Officer, which is also an option. Upside of activating Officer is that I might find something to play for 2 or 3 mana that I can play alongside a Harbin next turn. So I don't hate that idea. As opposed to running Denik into a counter spell. So yeah, the Officer proving to be quite useful. Opponent's forced to stay back since they're not comfortable racing us. And then we can just leverage our Officer in the meantime. Grab another Reinforcements. And another Denik. Okay, so another Denik, I'm happy if it gets countered. If it resolves, it will also discount our Soaring City, which could maybe still come in handy. And a Scatter Ray. That's fine, happy to make those trades all day long. And then end of turn, we can Reinforcements. All right, Fading Hope bounce a token does mean I no longer have five soldiers to maybe enable Harbin. So we just don't want them to find another creature. Opponent plays Soaring City, so must be their last land. Reinforcements resolve pretty swiftly. And then now I could play Harbin and still make a 4 mana play, either Officer or Disturb Denik. And I'm thinking we just disturb Denik now. So next turn we can fly over. That all worked. No attacks. And yeah, they need another bounce spell here. Otherwise they're just gonna die to our flyers. Opponent passes and yeah, explodes. So the power of the one drop officer in this matchup. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Up against Grixis, and we even drew a 1-drop. So, maybe looking at turn 2 Harbin, turn 3 Sky Strike. Could keep up Sentinel. Yeah, I think going for Harbin's fine. They may be able to kill it. But I don't have a counterspell to keep up alongside Sentinel. 
And if they kill Harbin, then Officer has a better chance of sticking around. Now I guess there is the concern of a potential Brotherhood's End to wipe the board. So, could see the advantage of just uh, attacking for 5 and then keeping up Sentinel to pick up a creature in case they decide to pull the trigger. Alright, they're gonna try and cut down Harbin. So, could let that slide and just play Officer anyway. Which is a bit more mana efficient. One can still draw with a Bankbuster. And then we'll see if we get to untap with Sky Strike. We do, and we picked up a Counterspell, so that's great. So we'll play this out. Sky Strike can attack. I'm pretty likely to counter something with Protected Negotiators, and then I'll still be able to draw with Sky Strike. If not, I can just activate Recruitment Officer. So I'll give up on two damage in order to be able to attack. All right, go for the throat. So if we cast this with Kicker, we'll have three creatures. And then we'll still attack here. And be able to draw. All right, so if we can dodge a sweeper here, we're in great shape, but a Brotherhood's End could be painful. And then probably no reason to draw now, since I wouldn't be playing another officer even if I found one. Okay, Bruin's digging with a Bankbuster. So unlikely to have a Brotherhood's End in hand. And a Trespasser, that's fine. Okay, so eventually hoping to find another Harbin to fly the team. Valiant Veteran would be good. But for now, we're just drawing and... Making more tokens. Reinforcements helps us go wide. So Sky Strike attacks. Might want to cast something main phase to not let it switch to night time. Although if it does, then we can kill it with a destroy evil. So tricky spot. Might be okay to just draw now, see what else we pick up. A Mirex, another Mana Sink. So on the one hand, we don't want to overextend into a Sweeper. On the other hand, I don't want to switch it to Nighttime. So maybe it's okay to play Reinforcements, Main Phase, which also still draws with a Sky Strike. And then we can maybe save a creature with a Sentinel. Hellraiser, okay, gets back. One of their spot removal spells. We can uh, try and counter it if we pick up some interaction. Alright, no counter, so that resolves. And then they'll likely kill the Sky Strike Officer here. And then the question is do I save it with a Sentinel? Yeah, seems worth it. And then we can destroy evil the Hellraiser on the way back. We're going incredibly wide, so as soon as we find one of our lords, we can deal a ton of damage. Wandering Emperor will also come in handy. Okay, so destroy evil the Hellraiser seems fine. So we can fly over with a Sentinel. Opponent can crew Bankbuster to discourage an attack on the ground, which I wasn't really intending to anyways. And then I think I'm still going for Sky Strike here. And we can draw several cards. We are tapped out pretty much, so Sweeper could hurt. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we're just going too wide for the Grixis deck to keep up. Too much card advantage from Sky Strike Officer. Awesome.
So yeah, I'm quite pleased with how this flashy soldier's build worked out. Didn't miss Brutal Cathar too much, still have quite a bit of removal between our channel lands and Wandering Emperor replacing the Cathar, so it's not like we're really missing out on interaction. And then the counter spells can be incredibly useful, especially against some of those more mid-rangey decks that try and tap out for big expensive plays. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.